Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up and to a video where we're going to look at some strategy games. The best, uh, yeah, the best strategy games. Yeah, so we're going to look at 10 of our favourite strategy games. For this particular list, we're focusing more on business simulators, that type of strategy as opposed to, say, tactical games. That'll be another list, I'm sure, at some point. And your business might be uh, raising dinosaurs as we'll soon see. It could well be, absolutely. Uh, yeah, just don't forget that if you want to pick up any of these games, you can do so via our website, switchup.gg. You can get your eShop cards from there, and for a limited time, you can use the code SWITCHUP to get yourself 5% off of that order. All right, what are the current best strategy games on Switch? Well, let's find out. Right, we'll start off then with a classic, and this is Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Now, this uh, released on the Switch about a year or two ago now, and it did a very good job of bringing what is predominantly uh, a PC game across to consoles. Uh, it's one of the, obviously, the later Roller Coaster Tycoon games and has that 3D feel to it, where you go about your park and obviously rotate the camera. And the controls were pretty decent, actually. Again, somewhere where console versions could fall down. It uses like a radial wheel, which uh, works very well. And it's just a huge amount of fun building that roller coaster. I grew up on, on theme park, and this was kind of a, an evolution of that over the years. But it was a series I didn't get into back then, so it was nice to pick it up on Switch. Yeah, these games have that lovely business management side that is optional. So if you want to increase the ch you know the price for your snacks and stuff like that, or or you could like put loads of salt in your chips, yeah, couldn't you? Exactly. exactly they right. bought loads of drinks. Yeah, it, it did. It had that. Uh, you could be a bit of a rogue, mm. couldn't you, and, and make your money that way. But as you say, and you're absolutely right, you could uh, almost ignore it to a certain yeah. extent, couldn't you? Whereas some of the games you'll see later are a bit more uh, heavy handed in terms of the business side. You could kind of just enjoy a day at the fair here, couldn't you? Exactly. Then we've got, is it Jurassic World Evolution? Yes, Jurassic World, isn't it? Yeah, then we've got Jurassic World Evolution, which is essentially their dinosaur management sim, which sees you move into different parts, I think of, is it Island Nubla? No, I can never say it. Yeah, so you move to different parts, you're setting up um, different parks, essentially. It follows a really similar formula to what the game that Glenn's just mentioned, but obviously there's no roller coasters. You're concentrating on breeding those dinosaurs. And there is a, a real um, strategy element in that you have to be very careful about what dinosaurs you put together in the same pens. Weirdly, but I thought it was very cool. Sometimes they'll escape or there'll be another incident that happens you can go into the first person and like drive your little um, rangers around the park That's right, I and, remember, and, yeah. and take them to like try and solve that situation. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, you can tranquilize them, can't you? Yes. And, and bring them back to their, their pens. Um, I, I uh, played a, a Jurassic Park strategy game back in the day on the PS2, mm. which wasn't related to this particular series and was based on Jurassic Park, obviously, okay. as opposed to World, uh, which was a great deal of fun. And I can't remember the name of it now. I'm sure someone will, uh, mm. will let me know in the comments. But this is, again, just a very good you know, evolution of, yeah. of that game, you know? Yeah, really good. There is a sequel of this, but I don't think it's on Switch just yet. Um, and this did have quite a few patches on Switch and it runs well enough and it's usually on sale. So yeah, good one to consider. Then we've got uh, probably our personal, maybe favorite of this list. We've got Two Point Hospital. Yeah, I would say so, um, because it takes what was done before with, mm. with Theme Hospital, of course, it has some of the, the same team behind it, and just uh, modernizes it, you know, brings it to a new audience, doesn't yeah. it? And um, I loved those games back mm. in the day, they were such good fun, and this is, yeah, a great spiritual successor. Absolutely, and it's nice that it has a lot of the same team working on it. You can kind of tell, right, it has the same DNA. Um, with this one, you're designing and, and, and planning the layout of a hospital. You're trying to cater for all different conditions if you've never played the, um, what was the original called? Theme Hospital. It was Theme yeah, Hospital, it wasn't was, it? Yeah. If you've never played Theme Hospital, um, then that's the basic premise. Uh, and then researching new conditions, which gives you new access to new machines. And it just goes from there. You have certain criteria to meet and then you move on to another hospital. Yeah, and obviously that might sound a bit dry, but what we should probably say is that the illnesses are absurd, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's things like, head. Yeah, like deflating people's heads. <laughs> and uh, there's one where people become starstruck and they think they're uh, Freddie Mercury and things like that. And yeah. they're walking around the hospital dressed <laughs> as, as him. You know, it's just, it's very funny. And um, that humor, that element of humor, right down to the uh, the over voice, you know, the voice yes, you hear going yeah. through the on, on the tannoys and whatnot. Just saying little quips here and there. It's, uh, yeah, really very charming game. On the back of that then, we'll just quickly talk about Two Point Campus. Now, this was obviously the most recent iteration, I guess, of this, I'm going to call it a franchise, hmm. um, but it went into the campus setting of an American, uh, well, an American 
college, college, thing quit college exactly, thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, we weren't sure how that was really going to translate across. It's exactly the same game. Yeah. Um, I still don't feel that it's as good as getting rid of bloaty heads and stuff yeah, like that. Like, yeah. I love that element of it. It doesn't, doesn't quite have the, the humour there uh, as the older game did. But it's still very, very much uh, that compelling formula. Very addictive, very enjoyable. And it has the, the added element, I guess, that it introduces new elements from the American college system, things like running frat parties and, and setting up events and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't played this one yet. Um, you are right, it was that setting that just uh, put me off, probably not the right, right uh, language, but it just, it didn't quite resonate with me as well as, as the previous game. But I will give this one a try, it does look fun. If you're a strategy fan that likes things that are a little bit more simplified, but they still have that same kind of compulsive element. And probably Let's Build a Zoo is one that Glenn's going to uh, convince you is awesome. Yeah, so Let's Build a Zoo um, is simplified in terms of its style. It goes very much back to, say, the old uh, theme park, I guess, really, of that top-down view, things like that, Zoo Tycoon, perhaps, back in the day. It still has the strategic element to it, and it also has a quite interesting gene splicing yes, yeah, I remember. mechanic where you can create new animals. But it's uh, it just has that nice simplified, as you say, simplified feel to it. Mm. Really nice throwback to the '90s, mm -hmm. you know, the the mid or early to mid '90s strategy games. I bought this one on a, a bit of a whim, to be honest, and ended up playing it with my daughter and just absolutely loved it. Put a, a huge amount of time into this one. Don't be fooled by the simplistic visuals because it's uh, yeah, it's, it, it will get its teeth into you for sure. Awesome. Then we have City Skyline. Now the biggest critique for this one has to be the visuals and performance. Yes, this is one that obviously very much like um, SimCity back in the day, obviously that's that sort of style, which we don't have many of mm. on the Switch. You know, yeah. that, that pure city builder seems to have died out a little bit over the years, certainly on consoles anyway. But um, as you say, performance can start to tank as you grow your city, which is unfortunate, but I mean, I you know, for, for, for the amount I've played of it and I, I reviewed it back in the day, never to the point where it was breaking the game or, right. you know, like bits of it were starting to fall off. It was never <laughs> that bad for the size of city I built. That might change if you want to build a, you know, a metropolis, I don't know. But I found it, um, again, just a nice throwback to a Sim, Sim City, which I used to love during, uh, back in the day, going all the way back to the, the Super Nintendo version that I yeah. played and, and moving on to PCs. And there just aren't many of that type of game about now. No, it's funny. People are always looking for relaxing games and I personally find that quite relaxing. I know you have the disasters every now and then, but I quite like that. You know, not too much stress, just mm. gradually building your city larger and larger. Yeah, I, I don't know if I had disasters, I can't remember now. Um, it might have done, I can't remember. I mean, there's definitely power outages, I think. Yeah, things like that, yeah. absolutely, for sure. But you can uh, you can put in a, a code, or not even a code, but you can just uh, opt to have unlimited money. And just, oh, nice. Just go crazy if you want, and that's <laughs> always fun, you know. <laughs> Imagine me with unlimited money. Be the same. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on unicycles. Let's go. <laughs> Next up, then we got a uh, rail grade, which was a hidden gem in one of the sales videos. I saw it pop up, and I was like, "Oh, this looks interesting." Then I saw that it was published by Epic Games. I was like, "Hang on, I've never heard of this before." Um, did a bit of research, gave it a go, and it's incredibly addictive. Um, top down. I don't know if you. It is a strategy game. It is, well, it is, it is a strategy game, but it has smaller scenarios. So it might be like a 10 minute scenario where it wants you to get power from one place of this island to the other. Right. And you have to build your track manually, uh, set up the trains on it, choose how many uh, carriages they have. And it's all about being as efficient as you can because the, the quicker you can do the stage, the more points uh, and the more rewards you'll get. But it doesn't, it, on the same page, you can just chill. You know, you right, can have this yeah, ludicrously yeah. long track that yeah. is inefficient just because you want to. Just because, yeah. Just yeah. because, exactly. Has an incredible soundtrack as well. I think I sent you some, didn't I? That, you did, like, yeah. Really nice. Yeah. I don't know what you call this, like, electro music. Yeah, it had a, like a synth uh, yes. vibe to it, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I highly recommend this one, actually. And again, it's another one I think goes on sale a lot because no one reviewed it when it came out on Switch. Next one then is Tropico 6, I believe, is the one on Switch. Mm -hmm. Tropico 6. Now, the Tropico series, again, has that city building element to it, but it does it under the guise of being on an island and kind of working for a, a dictator almost, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. But because of that, there's, there are a lot of quite humorous uh, scenarios, mm -hmm. a lot of sabotage, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, vi villainous, if you like, or, or criminal elements to what you're <laughs> doing as well. Um, and again, it's just a very different take on, on this genre. Uh, it's quite a varied list, actually. You wouldn't expect that necessarily. No. But Again, on the Switch, the visuals do take uh, quite a hefty hit. Now, it has been patched 
a couple of times since we reviewed it. Mm -hmm. It may well be that now it you know, runs much better than it did then. And if that's the case, again, if you've paid it recently, please do let us know. But that was its main drawback, really, that. And obviously the price that came with it, mm -hmm. bearing in mind you could play it elsewhere and it would run much better. But it is available on the Switch if you find it for a good price. And you know you can be quite forgiving of, of some flaws. It's, uh, it's certainly fun. Then we've got Port Royale. Was it Port Royale 4? Yes. Released on the Switch yep, version? Was, yeah. This is probably the most technical uh, and in-depth um, of all the strategy games that we're going to talk about today. It is very much for fans of, of the older style that you'd have on PC. Mm. You know, and, and in that regard is probably its biggest strength and weakness. The controls can be a little bit fiddly. Um, it can be very slow paced, but it does have that depth if you're after something you know, from that, I don't know, era, era I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I really want to play this one because I used to love a series called Anno. A -O -O, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I want to play that because you have that kind of port element to mm -hmm. it and obviously going across seas and finding bounties and building up towns. But because it's so, this one is, is so in depth, it's not one that I can play yet and, and get anywhere with it. It'll just be a waste <laughs> of, of my time, you know. But um, if you are looking for, as Mark said, you know, that, that much more in depth version of, of this sort of game, then I would say this is probably the most technical in terms of its mechanics on this list. Absolutely. All right, our penultimate game then is Factorio. Yeah, Factorio is a, an interesting one because it's, again, just a very different type of game. Um, you, you crash land on a, an alien world and you kind of start with just the broken parts of your ship and you need to start to create or build parts to, to move on and you end up building like a, a multinational or multi-dimensional mm. company almost you know what's interesting about this one is that it relies heavily you know that like the end goal is all about automation mm. it's about building things to a point where the city almost runs itself and you'll see the conveyor belts and you'll see things yeah. you know working for you but you have to put in the hard work to get to that point yeah and it also is quite different because you control a person you're mm -hmm. not like this uh, omnipotent being from above you are someone and you can be attacked by the creatures of the of the planet or later by kind of other other companies right and you'll need to take them out so you'll need to build weapons as much as that's cool do you know what i mean it has it has a very different take to it uh, on the switch the controls are quite cumbersome which is something that i said i guess we can say about a, yeah. a couple of games on here probably more so in this case just because there are so many menus to dive into mm. um but again if you can get past that fantastic game and it does have a very substantial demo so at least yeah. you can try before you buy it's a good shout all right last but not least then and it would be remiss for us not to talk about a 4x strategy we've got civilization 6 which has been out on switch for donkey's years isn't it it's quite an early release wasn't it yeah they included finally a lot of the um the dlc and expansions that weren't initially available you can usually find this one as a as a full pack on on the eShop if you're, and this has a physical as well, right? It does, yep, yep. So if you're not sure what, what these are, essentially you have multiple different ways of completing them. You can try and win through conquest, you can try and win through scientific uh, Achieve progress, yeah, achievements, yeah. things like that, which is nice. So you don't have to just go into it thinking you've got to move from A to B and kill everyone. Um, like some of the Total War games were, to be fair, back in the day. This time around, you can actually decide, hey, I'm going to go the scientific route. I'm just going to concentrate on that. I'm going to keep my borders safe and build myself up that way. And, and you can do that. It's completely within your control. Now, again, the question comes up, how does performance in smaller scenarios and smaller cities um, you're fine but as it gets to that like you know giant mega city stage you will notice some drops but personally you know I grew up on like a crappy PC <laughs> and I was it was part and parcel I could bring any PC to its knees with most of these games to be honest if you went large enough um, so just bear that in mind uh, when you're considering it and check out some reviews maybe but overall it's a game I don't know if you've played this one Glenn I have done yeah what I always liked about the Civilization series was well, you just mentioned it to be mm. fair but you could almost in your mind have been uh, you know expecting to go down the conquest route the domination yeah. route but then you start to make good money and you end up winning via economics or something mm. like that you know you, you almost change your mindset as you play sometimes exactly i just like that i like yeah. a bit of freedom it gave you you know yeah more games should do that just in general shouldn't yeah, they yeah they should yeah yeah i like that all right so those are 10 well they're actually 11 there but we put the two point games together two point campus and hospital um so yeah there's 10 10 options really Thanks so much to all of you that enjoyed the content. If you want to save some money on these, you can use code SWITCHUP for the month of March um, to save yourself a bit of money over at switchup.gg uh, and support us as well uh, in that way. Yep, please do let us know of any games we've missed. Obviously, it's very hard to uh, to please everyone on such a list, but um, we would certainly say that these are some of the best. But if there are any you want to recommend to people watching, then stick it in the comment section below. Yeah, remember this is our traditional strategy. We'll have a list for TRPGs and things like that. Yeah. All right, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!